Hi, this is Steve from the Dice Scoop in Nottingham and today I'm going to show you how to play a small card game called Red 7. It plays between 2 to 4 players. I've set it up here for a 3 player game. In Red 7, uh, the idea is quite simple. Um, uh, to stay in the game, at the end of your turn, you have to be winning. Okay. Um, in front of you, this is one person's card, you get dealt 7 cards at the start of the game and unless you play any additional rules you generally don't pick up any more cards during the game and you have to make those 7 last as long as possible. In front of you is your um, pallet and your pallet is all the cards that count towards you winning the game. To the side here is the rule. Now the rule is what, de what determines who's winning at this point. On every game the rule starts off by saying it's the red rule, it just says whoever's got the highest card wins. So at this point in time, this player here has got the highest card in a 5, this person's got 3 and this person's got 2. So it starts off, if he's winning, this person will get the first go playing around in a clockwise direction. On your turn in Red 7 you may do one of three things. The first thing you may do is add a card to your palette. So uh, if this person's go, um, the current rule is highest card wins, so they may play a card that is higher than this person's 5, they may play 6, and they are now winning. They can then end their turn because they're winning the game, they're still in the game. The next person might do exactly the same thing. They might look through their hand and they might think, well, I need to play a higher card than this person's 6. They may also play a 6. In this particular case, this person's played a 6, this person's played a 6, they both have the same high card. So what you would do, you would look at the ranking list of those cards. The ranking list is a little guide to help you. It just shows, shows you the ranking of the suits, with red being at the top, all the way down to violet at the bottom, the colours of the rainbow. And if you look at the particular board, this person's got a green 6, this person's got an orange 6. Looking at the uh, tiebreaker effectively, orange beats green. So this person is winning the tie, this person is winning the game. The second thing you can do in your turn in Red 7 is to change the rule. Instead of adding a card to your palette, you may add a card to the rule deck. And the colour of the card you add will determine the rule. For example, an orange card is the most of one number. So if you have two fives or two of a particular number, you will be winning this particular round. So you could change the rule by adding a card to the rule deck rather than a card to your palette. Um, the rules uh, are also handed on this little uh, reference guide here. Uh, so the red rule will be highest card wins, the orange rule will be most, most of a particular number, yellow one is most of one colour, green one is most even, blue is most different colours, indico is most cards below, uh, sorry, most cards in a row wins, and violet is the most cards beneath four. If you look at this particular player's hand, they're in a bit of a problem here. They haven't got a card high enough, their six doesn't beat the orange six currently in play. Um, and they haven't got any rule they can change it to where their single 5 is winning. So the third thing you can do in Red 7 is to change the rule and add a card to your palette. So this person might decide, I'm going to add a yellow 6 to my palette, and I'm going to change the rule to most of one colour wins. Well this person has got two yellow cards, and the other two players have got cards of different colours. You keep going with those rules until um, one person can't play. Say you keep going and this person can't play, they can't add a rule or add a card to their palette which enables them to win the game and when they can't do that they are out, they turn their cards face down, they no longer count. It's now between these two players and they would keep going until one person is left. If you have no cards at the start of your turn, you are out, so it helps to save cards towards the end. Um, but that is basically the rules of Red 7. Um, I'm going to show you now a couple of additional rules you can play in an expert game. The, um, there are some advanced rules in Red 7, which I don't think you need to play with. I think they kind of overcomplicate the game a bit. Um, but the advanced rules concern are playing odd cards to your palette. And whenever you play an odd card to your palette, you may do a special action. Uh, for example, when you play a 1 to, the, one to your palette, um, you may discard one card from someone else's palette and add it to the top of the discard pile. When you play a 3 to your palette, you may draw another card. This is probably the only way in the game um, where you're able to draw an extra card to your deck. If you play a 5 in your palette, it allows you to immediately play one more card to your palette. And if you play a 7 to your palette, you must discard a card from your palette and add it to the rule deck. That means you now need to be winning the rule you've just added. It just makes the gameplay a bit more 
challenging. You need to, a lot more decisions to be made, but I don't think a game needs it because it's quite a quick game anyway, and for the filler it is, I don't think it needs more complicated rules. Thanks for watching the review on how to play Red 7. This has been Steve from the Dice Club in Nottingham. See you later.